So let's talk about all the Apple announcements. Yes, even though I'm not an Apple fan, I don't normally buy their MacBooks, I don't normally buy their iPads or their iPhones, I still know what's going on when it comes to Apple and everything that Apple is currently doing. And I am, of course, a big tech nerd, so I want to talk about everything Apple just uh, announced when it comes to WWDC. I think it's called From Apple. First of all, let's get the big elephant out the room when it comes to Apple. The thing that they announced that was pretty big was the new Mac Pro. And this new Mac Pro is going to replace the trash can style Mac Pro that they currently have on the uh, market. And funny enough is, you can still buy that from Apple even though that's already way outdated it came out like five years ago or something crazy like that so if you were to buy this in this day and age it just really just would not make sense since that thing is already a dinosaur and that thing is already ancient by today's standards so it just does not make sense so basically what's happening is if you did buy the Mac Pro that looked like a trash can and you bought it today you're kind of getting ripped off for what you're paying for just because that thing is pretty ancient tech at this point and Apple was like, well, we've been wanting to update the uh, trash can looking Mac Pro for quite some time, so let's go ahead and upgrade the MacBook or uh, the Mac Pro, excuse me. And they finally did upgrade the Mac Pro, and everyone's actually talking about the design of this brand new uh, Mac Pro. You can see on screen right now, this new Mac Pro looks like a cheese grater. It pretty much just looks like a standard desktop you get on the PC side if you're making like a gaming PC, if you're buying just a a desktop from like a manufacturer you can see it's a desktop computer like that it's pretty much like a mid-sized tower but the thing is with this mid-sized tower it really does look like a cheese grater what else could I really say about this new uh, Mac Mac Pro but overall this thing is uh, very interesting first of all the biggest thing with this brand new Mac Pro is the fact that this brand new Mac Pro is not gonna be cheap at all I'm talking it's gonna empty your bank account. I'm talking it's like $6,000 for that and that's only one configuration or the base model so it does start at $6,000. So if you want to buy a Mac Pro to begin with, you do have to spend that initial $6,000 for the product and then it only goes up from there. I heard it can easily reach like $60,000, $70,000, $80,000 depending on how much you actually spec this thing out. The nice thing about the new Mac Pro from Apple is the fact that this brand new Mac Pro is going to be modular so you can put in a whole bunch of different things to it. You can even spec this thing out with some crazy aspects. I'm talking for instance in the RAM department, you can go up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM when it comes to this thing. Again, let me make that clear. 1.5 terabytes of uh of a RAM when it comes to this thing. So you can see that's a lot. Who really needs 1.5 terabytes of RAM on a desktop computer? Who really knows about that? And then I think you can put up to like four GPUs in it or something crazy. So overall, this thing you can see is definitely a beast. Who is this uh, Mac Pro actually for? For $6,000 or anything like that? Honestly, I can tell you right now, it's not for the average consumer. I pretty sure the average consumer definitely doesn't need a professional desktop experience like the brand new Mac Pro. I think it's going to be for people who are like in the filming industry who makes movies for a living or maybe if you make music for a living you might want this or maybe if you're doing some 3D renderings of some sort and things like that I think you're really going to want this. I don't even think the best YouTuber out there is definitely going to want something like this. I just don't think for what it goes for and the practicality of it I just don't think it makes sense you have to really know what you're going to be using the power of this for and I think for most everyday Joes even if you have the money in the bank it physically just does not make money to be buying this thing because ultimately you would be getting ripped off because let's be honest a normal everyday average Joe will not be using all the power of this computer all, uh, all the time most likely so most likely for an average day Joe this is just going to be a, a waste of money but props to Apple for making this thing it's finally time they did upgrade the Mac Pro because the Mac Pro trash can style was definitely outdated at this point and they really did need to make a new one and they needed to make a new one that really is going to be with the modern times and have all modern specs and things like that so there's the uh, computer right there again it does start at six thousand dollars and then depending on what configuration you do want to go with this thing you can easily get up to forty fifty sixty thousand dollars something crazy like that for this uh, computer alone and then besides the Mac Pro that Apple uh, recently announced they did announce a, a professional pro display as well and this press professional pro display is just as expensive as well the standalone for this thing is 
uh, easily one thousand dollars or one grand for this thing so you can see it's a very uh, expensive stand just for this pro display and of course why would you want to spend so much money on a pro display well the reason you'd want to spend so much money on a pro display is the fact that a, a, a pro display is supposed to be for people like who are in the movie industry who are making 3d renderings and things like that who need precision accuracy when it comes to color representation that's the person who would actually need a display like this but for this display again just like the mac the mac pro that's coming out uh coming out in the future i can't really recommend this to anyone i don't know who would need this i'm sure people who are in certain professions would actually use the mac pro and use the the, uh, the color accurate pro display from Apple, I'm sure they would actually use that as well. But besides that, I don't know who all this stuff is for, at least for the average consumer. So that all that stuff is very interesting and it's nice to know that they are finally refreshing the Mac Pro trash can style, so that's good. And then outside of just the hardware uh, announcements from Apple, we didn't really get anything else uh, from Apple, of course, this isn't really the time of year where we get a lot of hardware announcements. A lot of people weren't even expecting them to actually uh, unveil the new Mac Pro cheese grater. A lot of people thought it was just going to be uh, software only because that's what this conference is usually for. It's usually for uh, software related stuff when it comes to like the iPad, the uh, iPhone, the uh, Apple Watch and things like that and boy did they have some pretty interesting stuff on the software side so let's talk about the big thing the big thing here are two things one is the fact that they did actually update iOS iOS is going to iOS 13 and iOS 13 looks pretty interesting the biggest thing a lot of people are excited for when it comes to iOS 13 is the fact that iOS 13 on iPhones is actually going to have a dark mode that may not seem like a big deal to some of you out there if you're not a nerd or you don't use your cell phone like hardcore or all the time dark mode I know so many people are excited for dark mode and me as a consumer and me as a tech enthusiast and me using uh, different devices I can say I do enjoy dark modes actually fun fact I am going to be making a video really soon I really want to make this but I am going to be making a video where I talk about dark modes and how to use dark modes on the uh, Samsung Galaxy S10 line of phones and uh, Android apps all together because I really do like dark mode I think dark mode is a uh, uh, understatement and it's not something people talk a, a lot about but I really do enjoy my experience with dark mode it is a game changer for me personally I love the way that dark modes actually are on your eyes they're very nice to look at they don't uh, hurt your eyes or anything like that and then I just love the color of dark mode because I think dark mode is badass personally if you ask me I love everything about dark mode and then on top of that besides saving your eyes besides besides it being much more easier or much more uh, nicer to look at it does actually save battery life on your smartphone so there's a number of different reasons to why you would want to use a dark mode and that's what a lot of people are excited for in iOS 13 and then I do know they got a new keyboard and they got some other new features, but that's one of the biggest things that people are looking uh, looking for when it comes to uh, iOS 13. I'm not really going to go into every single detail of iOS 13 because there is a couple of uh, new features in iOS uh, 13, but it is nice. I guess iOS 13 is rolling out. Now, when it comes to iOS 13 and the compat compatibility of iOS 13 when it comes to iPhones, unfortunately, I think if you have an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 6S, unfortunately, anything from that, under will not be compatible with this brand new iOS 13 but you should still give props to Apple to be honest because who would have thought Apple would keep supporting devices as long as they did no one actually thought those older devices would actually get something like an iOS 12 and things like that so those been supported for many many years and honestly of course you can't really blame Apple for unsupporting those devices of course once a device has been on the market uh, too many years it is time to move on and I think they had their fair share of updates and their fair share of uh, of time being an Apple product so it's fair enough for them because of course sometimes you just gotta let things die and it is time for all those older iPhones like the uh, iPhone 6, iPhone 5, iPhone 4 and it is time for those devices to die and I think Apple is making this smart move because like I said you can't support some, uh, something uh, forever and now let's talk about something that's actually pretty unique and a lot of people are definitely going to be excited for this I'm talking about the brand new iPad iPad OS 
they're pretty much rebranding it instead of iOS it is going to be iPad OS I think it's called because basically what they've been trying to do for many years now a couple years now when it comes to the iPad specifically they've been trying to move the iPad closer to like a uh, laptop replacement and since Apple is trying to make the iPad a laptop replacement they're really trying to make iOS on that thing feel more like a desktop class uh, OS, whether we're talking about PC or whether we're talking about Mac OS, they're really trying to combine some aspects of Mac OS into uh, their iPad with uh, iOS and basically what they're doing now is the biggest takeaway from this is they are going to allow keyboard support natively or excuse me not keyboard support they are going to be allowing mouse support natively on the iPad which is pretty mind blowing stuff for the first time you do get it natively and then on top of uh, mouse support natively on the iPad you will be able to actually uh, plug in a USB thumb drive natively and they're pretty much restructuring the way you browse files on the iPad because as you know with iOS, iOS was not meant to be something closer to like Mac OS or PC to where it has a really good uh, file management system and since it doesn't have a good file management system Apple is really trying to work hard to make sure when you plug in a thumb drive natively there'll be a good file management system in place like a uh, Mac OS or a uh, PC and Windows to really utilize it so more people can get more work done and you can kind of replace your uh, replace your uh, laptop when it comes to Mac or when it comes to Windows. That's really their whole goal here when it comes to the new uh, iOS on iPad. And then on the home screen, you will be able to put widgets on the home screen. So it's, you can see what, overall what Apple is doing with the new iOS for uh, iPad they're pretty much making it more closer to a desk a desktop uh, class a desktop class uh, OS whether than a mobile OS for their uh, iPad do I think all the improvements that they're doing to the iPad OS or iOS on iPad do I think it's going to flat out replace a laptop honestly if you ask me I think it's going to be still very hard to kind of use an iPad as a full-on laptop replacement because even with all these updates in my opinion that Apple is doing to their iPad and to the iOS on iPad I still think they got quite a long way to go when it comes to bridging the gap between uh, a normal OS on like a computer and then an uh, iPad OS or iOS uh, on uh, iPad I still think they got quite a long time to go and a lot of users have actually tried to use an iPad as a replacement for a laptop and I know for a lot of different use cases and a lot of different people it just flat out does not work and for me personally even though the direction that Apple is going with trying to replace an iPad as a, a laptop I still think that there's not enough improvements and they're still missing enough stuff even with what they're doing with this brand new update I still think they're missing so much that it's for certain users it's going to be hard to replace a laptop with an iPad uh, overall I, I guess it really does depend on your uh, situation how much of of a laptop do you actually use can you get away with using a tablet as your main computer yada 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 what type of work do you do of course do you do a lot of editing do you lot do a lot of word but word processing do you do all these different things you have to take in all these different things into consideration when you're thinking about is a uh, is a uh, is the is the uh, iPad going to be a replacement for a laptop. It just really does depend on a person to person case. There is no one solution fits everybody in this uh, situation. And for me, I guess that's uh, for me, I guess it's really going to boil down to I think a laptop is still going to be where I get most of my work done because there's more you can do on like Windows and Mac OS compared to uh, iOS on the iPad, even with all the improvements that they're actually doing. I actually kind of find it funny that Apple is actually trying to replace. Uh, laptops with iPads because I thought the whole point of a tablet was like a stopgap in between a smartphone and your traditional laptop. It was supposed to be kind of this bigger screen to kind of replace your smartphone but then it wasn't trying to be a laptop so I find it very funny that Apple is trying to flat out trying to make it closer to something like uh, the MacBook Pro or a Windows laptop. I find that very interesting. I thought it was supposed to be the middle ground. So what actually happens if uh, for instance, iOS on iPad actually fully gets full blown to where you can do almost anything that you can normally do on a normal uh, laptop. What does that mean 
for laptops itself. Does that mean it's gonna flat out replace something like a MacBook Pro or like a Windows laptop? What does that ultimately mean? I honestly really don't know the direction and how much farther they're gonna be taking their experiences when it comes to iOS on uh, the iPad uh, system. And th that'll be interesting to see how far they actually take it. But you can see with this uh, current update and with some of the other stuff that Apple has been really talking about and really focusing on when it comes to the iPad and the iPad hardware, they really wanna make it almost a laptop replacement that's just Apple. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the last final thing in this video. And the last final thing in this video is going to be uh, Apple's, uh, I think, uh, Apple Watch because they are updating a uh, update for that. There's a number of different things they talked about in this keynote or in this uh, presentation about the uh, about the uh, Apple Watch and something interesting about the Apple Watch, one of the features that they talked about for quite some time is actually a tip calculator on your on your Apple Watch. I think it's very interesting that they are adding a tip calculator to the uh, Apple Watch and I think some people may actually use it. I always know that these companies are always trying to implement different different types of applications and different types of use cases for these uh, for these smart watches and they're really trying to give you a reason to go out and buy these smart watches. Should smart watches even exist? Should smart watches not even exist? I think it's very interesting to see the direction of smart watches. I honestly think smart watches are kind of cool, but honestly for me, I've never used a smart watch in my life. I just don't find the practicality. I get it. You don't want to pull your phone out of your pocket. It makes more sense to have an always uh, connected device to your smartphone to where you don't want to pull your uh, smartphone out of your pocket. But here's my problem with them. Them. They get bad battery, and I don't like worrying about battery all the time. I'd rather use a traditional uh, watch if I was going to have a watch on at all. And then second of all, I really don't like the fact that notifications are taking over my life, and that is a real complaint from some other users on the internet, and that's why I don't like using smartwatches as a whole. I just find that always bugging me with how much we already uh, use technology in our everyday life. It does really does it really does seem like we are addicted in a lot of different aspects when it comes to our lives and when it comes to technology whether it's in smartphones, tablets, laptops, gaming, even traditional TVs. I feel like so many people out there do so much things and they're so addicted to technology as a whole. And with me being a YouTuber and with me doing all this different stuff, I just don't have a use for a smartwatch. And I don't think there'll ever be a reason for me to ever get a smartwatch. That's just me. I get, I get them and I get why people use them and I get why they're absolutely cool. And I do respect the technology and it is cool to see new advancements in technology. Who would have thought we would have had something like a spy watch or like something on your arm that you can like talk to or like get notifications and things like that. I think they're very cool and I do I, I do applaud Apple for actually going out there and keep uh, supporting the uh, uh, Apple Watch and keep bringing all these brand new features to the Apple Watch like this new uh, like this new uh, tip calculator that's coming to the uh, uh, Apple Watch. Overall, everything that uh, Apple just announced is uh, very uh, interesting, and I am uh, pretty excited for everything that Apple announced, and props to uh, Apple and everything else like that. And yeah, those are pretty much all the updates uh, from Apple that we got at WWDC, I think it's called. Anyway, guys, this is Wayne from My Tech News, signing out.